everybody. Welcome to Happiness Matters, the show where our guests share their stories and insights to inspire you, encourage you, and motivate you, and so much more. I'm your host, Beanie Man, and Mo the Service Dog is my wonderful co-host who is around here somewhere. Eventually, you will see him. I swear. I promise you will. And we're brought to you by Mupu TV. Make sure you tune in to the newest episode every Friday, 7 p.m. Eastern on uh, Mupo TV. You can also catch our latest episodes and you can also watch another, more fabulous shows on mupotv.com. That is www.mupotv.com. And as usual, I'm super excited because I'm excited because life is good to have a friend of mine here on the show today, Tara Hall. Hi, Tara. Hey, how are you? I'm great. Thank you. Welcome to be on this. Welcome to the show. And I'm so glad you're here. And you and I met, I think we met through Angel Tussie. Yeah, it's been some time now. It's been, yeah. it's been a hot minute. And you were also one of my, my first guests on my, on my YouTube show when I did that, I believe. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's like awesome. So Tara, why don't you tell our viewers a little bit about you, who you are, what you do, who is yeah, Tara? Yeah, yeah. Hey, well, thank you so much for having me on. And I'm glad that we have remained connected over the years. It's been, I don't know, maybe like th probably four years now, three or four years. Something like that. Yeah. So, um, so thank you. And a little bit about me. I'm here in the East Coast in Connecticut. And I am uh, the owner, small business owner of uh, Tara Hall Inspired Solutions. It's a training and development company specializing in leadership, uh, coaching, mindset coaching, but also book writing as well and supporting people and telling their story. And of course, my first love, which is in training. So I love to do um, empowerment workshops. I love to do uh, environments, host environments, workshops, but personally, but as well as professionally to really help people move from point A to point B, making a whole bunch of noodle point moves in the middle, right? To get them right. to where they want to be. I love that. I so love that. And uh, how did you get started in that? What, what sparked that? Because I mean, I know when we're, when we're growing up, it's like, oh, I want to be a ballerina. I want to be a veterinarian. I want to be a firefighter. I want to be <laughs> president of the world, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what well, was that yeah, for you? Yeah, well, you know what's interesting? My, my first love was, it was going to be in nursing. I, I, my mom, uh, you know, had little ailments along the way as I was growing up. And I was like, oh, I want to help my mom. And uh, I wanted to be a nurse. That was my first thing. And then as I got older, I was like, oh, no, I don't think I want to do nursing, but maybe I'll be a teacher. I want to be a teacher. Oh, nice. no, maybe I don't want to do that. And then I settled on um, becoming, my desire was to become a speech pathologist. So I was always in this helping field. I didn't become a speech pathologist either. Um, ah. I, I actually moved <laughs> into the uh, social service, human services space and, um, you know, worked in, in a child welfare for over 25 years okay. at that time. And, um, but I had a period in my career where I was working at our training academy and I really fell in love with that kind of teaching space, you know, helping people learn, get onboarded to the job, you know, give them all the core competencies that they needed and the skill sets. And that's what really, you know, brought me joy the most. And I was able to stay in that training space for a few years and carried it over throughout. And, um, and I was sharing that, uh, you know, I had a career change, right? In the middle of COVID, who would have, who would have thought, right? I, you know, stranger things have happened. Yeah. So <laughs> I was, I was ready to move and transition from the space I was in into uh, what I do now, which is a full-time workforce development trainer. So same thing. I'm like uh, my, my small business and my, my, my passion and my nine to five really aligned. And uh, that's the space I'm in now. So it's been, it's, uh, been a great space for me it, it oh it sounds like i think you know it's like when we do what we love i don't consider it work i really don't right. it's like you know oh i get to work on the cool the cool stuff i mean we still and, and as business owners you know there's yeah, the, yeah. still the mundane boring things that we have to do that have to get done yep. and it's like okay i'm gonna get that done real quick i'm gonna swallow that frog you know, and then, <laughs> then, then I can focus on the creating and then I can focus yeah. on what I really want to do that talking to people, helping people and all of that. And it's just, it's a, it's a great space to be in. It's, it really is. And I, and I'll just say my experience is it's, I, I actually sent a message to my friend today and I said, 
I'm so grateful that I get to be in the space I'm in right now, which is researching and creating content and watching videos and just like really being in a space of uh, being creative and bringing that to that training space. And it just has opened up a whole nother, whole nother part of my brain, you know, that I, I get to tap into on a nice. daily basis now. I love that. So, so you said you're doing the nine to five thing, but you also have your own business. Mm -hmm. Did you always know growing up that at some point you will have your own business, you will be a business owner or did you more go like, it was it more of a, a happy accident? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, what I will say is it was in, in the back of my mind, um, really like in my late twenties, mm. actually. And I, and I remember sharing with my sister at some point, I said, you know, I'm not sure what this is, but I want to be a, a philanthropist. <laughs> and she's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> so for me, that was sort of this, that was sort of the seed of helping other people. And, and I think it really just manifested in different ways from my late twenties into this chapter of my life now. You know, and, and I think for me, it just unfolded with one, you know, one step, you know, at a time. And I can look back on it now and say, wow, this was all alignment to get to where you are today. Oh, you mean 2020 hindsight? What? <laughs> <laughs> it happens a lot to me. I look back and I'm going, because, you know, we sit here and it's like, how did that happen? And then yeah. you connect the dots backwards. And it, it's crystal clear. It's like, of course, this is why this happened. Yes, yes. You know, that 2020 hindsight, it's like, it's crystal clear. Yeah. But so when you're in the thick of it, it's like, oh my gosh, it's never going to happen. And I don't know what the next step will be. And, you know. Yeah. yeah. So I just appreciate the journey and all the things that have unfolded along the way, meeting you, uh, meeting some other ladies and other networks and just saying, wow, this is all of what was there, this was all of the possibility, but this behind me was also all of the necessary steps to get to where I am today. And there's more, right? You know, there's more to come, but, but I, I really am um, in a sweet spot right now, which is great. I love that. It's like, you know, the, those uh, infomercials, but wait, there is more. Sure. <laughs> yeah. And it, it's so fun to see when, um, it was like, sometimes I sit there, I don't know about you, but sometimes I sit here and it's like, oh my gosh, I don't see it. Where is it? Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden it shows up and it smacks you in the face. Mm -hmm. And you, and it's like, oh my gosh. And then you realize it's been there the whole time. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, I wasn't in the space to see it. You know, it, it's like, oh my gosh. It all makes sense. It's like yeah. um, my first book when I wrote that. You know, at some point I was thinking maybe I should write a book. You know, I do want to do speaking. I knew that, but a book, that's scary, right? Yeah. And then when I, when I walked away from everything back in 2018, and I was like, oh, I'm going to do coaching. And I was trying to put my, my programs together. Nothing flowed. I mean, nothing load yeah. but during that two-week period I had random people come up to me and talk to me about the book do you have a book out are you writing a book and I was sitting here going what the fire truck are you talking about I don't have a book you know and I was a little slow on the uptake you know <laughs> but I finally sat there and I was like okay fine and I, and I talked to the universe you know I'm like okay fine you want me to write the stupid book give it to me <laughs> And, and yeah. all I heard was, okay, sit down, shut up, listen, write. And I wrote and published it in three and a half months or in under three months. I don't even remember. It was like, poof, done. Wow. But it's always been there. It's just, I wasn't ready. Yeah. yeah. You know, and, and that's with everything else. It sure but is. It's there. It's just, when we're, when we're not ready, we don't see it. It's like, you know, when, when um, you're looking to buy a new car your first brand new car, you mm. pick out the model, you pick out the color, nobody has it, you're excited. And then you drive off the lot and everybody and their mama has your car in your color. <laughs> right? 
there all along. <laughs> we were there the whole time. It's just our focus was not there. Yeah. Our awareness wasn't there. Yeah. And it's the same thing with everything else. I was like, oh. <laughs> so, you know, when, when you say that, it, it makes me think of, you know, when you, when we're, when we're speaking to people about, you know, and they'll ask us questions, oh, you're an author, or how did you become a best-selling author? Like, how do you do these things? Or how did that opportunity happen? And like you said, it's sometimes that you're in a space where these opportunities, because you're open now, mm -hmm. you're open to receive it and things just flow. But if you have that tight energy, it feels as if nothing's working. Right. And when you sort of relax into it and say, you know, okay, maybe I didn't hit that mark today, but I'm going to do it again tomorrow. I'm going to try it another way tomorrow. Then you stay, you stay in motion, right? So you stay in motion and then these other things can open up for you. So yeah, that's just kind of the way life works, right? Absolutely. All the time. It's just like, boom. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, we're going to take a quick commercial break. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Your host here, Beanie Man and Mo the Service Dog, and our wonderful guest, Tara Hall. And let's talk about following your heart. Because I know you just you just mentioned, you know, that you have a big shift going on throughout the whole COVID thing. I refer to this as coronacation, but that's mm. me. <laughs> a, long, a long vacation. It's a long vacation. Well, I mean, you know, the, the thing is okay, following your heart. When everything yeah. shut down and for me it was nice because i didn't have to go out networking i didn't have to do mm -hmm. leave the house you know i could really focus and get into my creative zone mm -hmm. and my inner nerd she was so happy so and it's just you know things go from there so so you had this this big shift and let's talk about back to the opportunity because i'm sure that's something it was leading up yeah it was coming you know, but then all of a sudden, poof, it happened and the opportunity presented itself. Yeah, for sure. I, I was just having this conversation with my husband a couple of nights ago. And, and I remember thinking, you know, I was ready to make a career transition for uh, probably about, I would say anywhere between three to five years before it actually happened. Um, I had been in motion. I had been uh, putting my my feelers out for different opportunities. I interviewed in different spaces and it just wasn't happening. And, mm -hmm. and then what I started to do was because I was getting frustrated and I said, well, you know what? You just have to let it be. Like everything else, it will happen when it's supposed to. Because if I, I felt as if I was trying to force something the opportunity, they weren't even opportunities. The opportunity to apply was there, right? But they weren't converting. Mm. And they were also spaces that I, that was not my primary desire to be in. I was going to take it, but it wasn't where I was supposed to be. Right. So I had to say, hmm, you have to reset. You have to relax. Let it go. Let it go for a little while, Tara, you know? Mm -hmm. And when I did that, I didn't even see the job that I received. Someone else saw it and saw it posted and shared it with me and said, hey, did you know? I said, no, I didn't even see that. And but here's the thing, you had put it out there. I put it and out you there. Put, yeah. You put your order out to the universe, to God, and whatever you want to call it. And they're yeah. like, okay. Yeah, 
Yeah, for sure. And, and, and what I was also doing, because I was saying, okay, now you have to be intentional about this. And it was even on my vision board. I had three year plan right in the middle of my vision board. And I had very intentional words underneath that board. I had career, I had transition. I had like some very, you know, specific things there. And then what I also started to do was I kept a, what I call, um, I believe I kept it called a, a goal crush log and it was color coded. I had like all these things on there of just different things I was doing in my business, but also what was I doing to, like you said, put the call out to the universe of my efforts mm -hmm. in the space I wanted to be in. And when I did that, I could keep track of how many places I applied to and what was happening. So it was still there, but it was in the back, but it was still there as an order to the universe. And that's why I believe it happened the way it did. I didn't see the posting. Someone told me about it and everything happened like super quick. And, nice. um, and, and I was like, wow, I can't believe this is happening the way it's happening. And but that's how it works with the law of attraction. Yeah. You know, once we disconnect from the who's the house, the what's and when's and all the, the junk, and we just like, this is what I want. Yeah. I know it's going to happen, but we detach from the outcome yes. and let the universe do its thing. It's going to make it happen. It's going to happen. Yep, it it may not show up the way we anticipated. It might not show up when we anticipate it, but it'll be perfect and the timing will be perfect. Mm -hmm. But it will show up. Yeah. And, it and did. that's the beauty. And, and, and you, we sit there and going like, oh my gosh, how did that happen? Because <laughs> yeah. you look at it, it's like all the, the 5 million pieces that had to fall into place and happen and not happen in order for this to happen. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. It's yeah, mind blowing. It, yeah. And it was, it, it was like, wow, this, this, this really does work when you just kind of let it be. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have a friend of mine who was, who was in the same, same space and um, is looking to make a transition. And we, we talked about my experience and, and I will often send her, you know, reminders about, you know, it'll happen when it's supposed to let it be, let it be. And uh, quit and controlling I, and I it. That excuse me what was that i said quit controlling it yes 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 and i told her i believe this will be her year for the transition because she's letting it be in a different way so nice and, yeah. and th the other thing i found is like once i get myself out of the way and trust the universe that it'll come usually i would say about 90 plus percent of the time it shows up way better and bigger <laughs> Oh boy, yeah. <laughs> than I could have ever imagined. I dreamt about it. Mm -hmm. You know, so when I put out my order to universe, say it's for money, for instance, right? It's like I put out, I want X amount of money or more by mm -hmm. this time or sooner. I mean, seriously, that's how I put out my order to the universe. Make a bold declaration, right? You make a bold declaration. I always laugh and I tell people, and I'm driving or more. It really works. It does. But it's, it's, we have to really get that, that, that feeling that we have to control the situation. We have to really get that out of the way. It's like our job really is put out the order, assume the feeling of the wish fulfilled, visualize as if it already happened with all the senses, all the feelings, all the emotions, and just like, you know, oh my gosh. It's like, for instance, um, convertible, you want a convertible, right? You want it so bad. But right now it's like, there's no money, there's no this, there's no that, but you really want that convertible. So what you do is you visualize yourself in a convertible with the wind in your hair and the good smells in the summer and all of that. And before you know it, you'll have the convertible. Yep. And I say that because oh, it happened to me. <laughs> and this and is I, not the car I, I currently have. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'll tell you, it wasn't until I actually started to really like, um, what's the word I'm looking for, but it wasn't until it became part of my DNA. That's what, you know, what I'm looking for uh, to really understand like how that worked. Um, because when I became a, um, a certified Canfield success trainer and coach, it was really all about that transformational work. And it went right back to what you were just saying. And it, you reminded me of the equation 
that uh, the success equation that I, I train in, which is E plus R equals O, events plus response equals outcome. And it always has to do with that R, right? It's our thoughts. It's our beliefs. It's what we tell ourselves out loud and what we tell ourselves subconsciously. And then the key thing is that vision. That's why yep. I said I had the vision board because it was an, an intentional board, but I had to put action behind my board. It wasn't just, you know, it wasn't even a lot of pictures, honestly. It was words. It was intentional words that I put there and I would have to keep looking at it to make sure I was in alignment with what I had there. And that's when you, you know, when you see it working because you're very focused and you're intentional about what it is you want. And mm -hmm. I was like, oh, okay, I get it now. Like this, I get it, I get it, <laughs> you know? <laughs> when, I'm, when I'm working with people to let them know that it's possible for them, I, I share the things that I, I do behind the scenes to keep myself motivated because even though I'm in the space that I wanted to be in, like you said, it doesn't always show up the way or in the package that you called for it. Mm -hmm. So there are other things that come with it. But that's the whole beauty of it because you get to basically co-create with the universe to make it happen, <laughs> you know. I know, and it's so beautiful. It is so, to me, it's exhilarating to see, you know. And uh, I used to be, it's like, you know, the, the saying, good things come to those who wait. I was such mm -hmm. a believer in that for, for the lot because I didn't know. Right. I didn't know. So now when I hear people say that, I'm like, yeah, good things come to those who wait. I said, great things come to those who take, to those who take action. Absolutely. And, you know, and they're looking at me like, what? It's like, oh, pattern interrupt. I like it. <laughs> yeah. It's like people say, no, I dream of this. I dream of that. And I'm like, dreams are great, but dreams require action. <laughs> right. And I said, and nobody says you have to move the whole mountain. You have to, you don't have to climb the whole mountain. One mm -hmm. step. One little chisel, you know, what can you do right now to take you where you want to go into that direction? I mean, to go anywhere, you know, you put in your GPS, the coordinates where you want to go. That's the order to the universe. Okay. Putting, putting those coordinates and that's the order to the universe. Mm -hmm. And then you get in your car, but the car is not going to drive itself. Okay. You actually have to turn it on. <laughs> You have to put your foot on the accelerator and go into that direction mm -hmm. to get there. This is no different. Life is no different. Anything you want in life, you can have. There's no limits because everything we want already exists. We're just so focused on the what we don't have that we don't see what we do have and what we could have. Yeah. You know, so, but um, I love, I love what you do. And the joy you bring. And I know you also do, and I love it when they pop up when I when I scroll through Facebook and your little life, your little life thingy pops in real quick when you do a little life video, like when you're walking or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I was like, this is so cool. I mean, it's just like just seeing you and and listening to your little tip, you know, what would you do? It's like my 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 happy vibration goes, whoop, it just goes up. <laughs> <laughs> because here's you know, the thing doesn't yeah, take yeah. much no mm -mm. no nope. so i love those i love those little things and um so you were you were not really planning on writing a book right it just kind of happened <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> i laugh because i just had an event a about um actually the first weekend after the new year mm -hmm. i and, saw that and and i i remember sharing it, it was a, a vision board experience and i remember um bringing my my books because i i wanted to let people know my story because writing a book was never in the path at all for me and it wasn't until i got exposed to like a community of authors a community of speakers back in 2018 that the it's like yes I like yeah, that community. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the, the idea of this is possible for you because I'm around people who have like, oh, this is my seventh book. This is my 10th book. Oh, I have five. And 
like, how is that even possible? Like, you know, how do people do this? I'm thinking that's going to take me about three years to crank out a book. <laughs> you know, that was on the good side. <laughs> and, um, but again, the opportunity to connect with people who were doing things that I had not been exposed to, again, was presenting the opportunity and what you were saying before, the possibility was there. Right. You know, so my first experience in writing was in uh, 20, actually ended up being in 2018. I was part of a book compilation. And here I am now uh, in 2022, I have seven publications now. Seven. It goes quick. Four best-selling and, and three and three uh, of three of my own publications. And it's just like, wow, who would have thought any of this was even possible. And, and, I love being, it. and I love being able to, to share that with people because it just goes to show that you have so many opportunities around you. It's, it's, are you open to receive them? Right. Or, and, and not just that, but are you open to acting on them? And now all of that came, as they say, like, um, <laughs> with with their uh, knees knocking a little bit. And when you get these opportunities, you're like, oh, can I really do this? Uh, should I do this? I don't know about this. And then you something inside says, go, like jump. Do it. Right. Well, my thing is when opportunity knocks, and I tell people, when opportunity presents to you, is presented to you and it aligns with what you want to do in any shape or form, say yes. Mm -hmm. Say yes. Without, without question, say yes. And then you go, oh crap, now what do I do? <laughs> <laughs> you figure out some action steps real quick. <laughs> you will. But here's the thing, because if opportunity, and here, this, is, this is one thing I learned, okay? The universe wants certain things to happen. So it throws out the, the, the net to people and mm -hmm. gives the idea to several people. Somebody will jump on that oh, yeah. and run with it because it's necessary, it's needed, and it, it's out there. Why not be you? Why not have you be that person? Yes. yes. You know, say yes. And then find people who can help you support you along the way. Yeah. It's like, I didn't, I didn't know the first, I mean, heck, I was born and raised in Germany. German is my first language. I learned English in school and then through my husband, you know, yeah. so English really is my second language. It's my primary language at this point because I speak it more than anything, <coughs> excuse me, but and then my book is in English. I never wrote it in German. I couldn't even write it in German if I tried. Okay. Was that scary? You betcha. Yep. <laughs> you betcha. But here's the thing. You find yourself a good editor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did. And then I was like, well, I, I mean, I'm dangerous with, with Photoshop and everything. <laughs> <laughs> But it's, it's, I never trained it. I never learned it. Mm. So I hired somebody to design my cover. And it's a beautiful one. Thank you. But, but the thing is, say yes to the opportunity. And everything, if it's meant to be, which it is meant to be, if you, you present it with the opportunity and it aligns with you, yeah, it is meant to be, you will get everything and everybody you need to make it happen without a fail. Yeah, and, and I, I just want to reinforce that for, for the listeners. You're talking to someone right now who was Miss Planet. It's got to be planned. I've got to have A, B, C, like it's, and when I, and that's what I was referencing earlier about that tight energy. I had a lot of tight energy because I was type A and I needed to kind of see how everything was going to be. And when I got in, in spaces where it was, hey, do you have an idea? Do you have something that is, is of value to someone else? It doesn't have to be mapped out perfectly, whatever that no. is. Is it of value and it, can you execute it? And when you know you can do those things, you have to then say, I got this. I can do this. And you've got to be your own cheerleader because sometimes there's no one in the background. True story. <laughs> okay. The entrepreneurial journey is lonely. And sometimes you're like, what am I doing here? <laughs> right. What am I doing? <laughs> and, True. And, and you really do have to be your own cheerleader. You have to be your own hype person 
um, because you'll find yourself on some paths and, and you'll start to question your, your abilities. And when you know you've already done it before, that's your evidence that you can do it again. And like you said, there will be people that will enter your space. Oh, I can help you with that. Oh, I know someone who can do that for you. Mm -hmm. Or I, you know, and you get introductions to other people. So I just say that because um, this is not who I used to be. Like I, I was not this person and I'm so grateful for the investments I made along the way and the investments I continue to make and the time I study and I put into my craft because I want people to get the best of me and I have to be in a good space to give them the best of what, you know, absolutely they want to be, you know, so. absolutely. Cause you can't pour from an empty cup. No. So on that note, we're going to take a quick commercial break. We'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back. I'm glad you stuck around. I'm Beanie Man, your host, and Mo the Service Dog is, oh, he's under my desk. He's right here, which is nice. And uh, our guest, Tara, is it Tara or Tara? What do you prefer? It's Tara. It's Tara. I'm, oh, I'm, I butchered that. My apologies. Woo. No worries. I, I will do gooder. There you go. <laughs> awesome. So it's, it's, and it's fun. Let's go back to writing books. Mm. You know, uh, I have people it's like, oh my gosh, you wrote a book that is so awesome. And to me, it's like, eh, thanks. You know, it, it's, it, to me, it's not extraordinary. Yeah. And what I learned is a lot of times what is ordinary to us and simple and easy for us is really extraordinary for others. Yes. Okay. Don't ever forget that. So whatever it is you're doing, don't think it, it means nothing. It's easy. It's, it's stupid or whatever. Okay. Not to somebody else. It's not to somebody else. And, and writing a book, I tell people, because I have people who's like, oh, I would like to write a book, but I could never do it. And my question is, why not? You know, and then I get the, uh, 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 <laughs> you know, I just couldn't. And I said, well, you're talking to me right now. Tell me your story. Yeah. And they share their story. And I said, now write it down exactly like you say it. When you write your book, especially your story, okay, put it in your own words. Be you. Yeah. Be you. And here's a really cool tool. There's like automated transcription services. You just dictate it and they transcribe it for you. You have to go through it and clean it up because it's all AI. And sometimes I look at the things that come through and I'm like, what? Nope. <laughs> you know, but here's the thing technically you don't even have to write it absolutely you can record it on your phone and then send it to one of those those uh, automated transcription servers and some of them are free you get x amount of minutes for free yeah. so there's that and here's the other thing too my dog wrote a book okay <laughs> mo the service dog wrote a book okay if my dog can do it and that goes back to Get the help that you need. Sure. So my friend, Linda, she can actually communicate with animals. And Mo told her that he wanted to write his book. And she told me, and I, I laughed and I'm like, sure, let me get right to it. I don't have, I don't even know. <laughs> right? <laughs> I mean, just no. I mean, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't talk dog. I mean, I can <laughs> understand his body language, but to write a book. Right, right. And write down what he wants. And what? That's just crazy. So guess what we did? She came over. We were sitting right in the space, the three of us. And it's not a big space here, right? So we were crammed in this little space here. And she translated what Mo was telling her. Mo. And we transcribed it, cleaned it up, and it's in a book. That's Mo, what I'm saying. Published author. Mo is a published author. It's called Mo the Service Dog because every dog has a purpose. Because it was important for him to get the, the word out that, yeah, we might be pets, 
their service dogs, but they all, every single one of them has a purpose. And it was really important for him to get that message out, you know, especially for the service um, animal community. Mm. Yeah. You know, the service dogs and everything. It was really important for him to get that out. So we published his book. You can do it, you know, or you can start writing just your story. Speaking of, send your story to story at mattersofperspective.com up to 1400 words. Okay. We'll put it in the book. Take advantage of it. <laughs> right. Yes. Because it's there's like, an there's an opportunity right there for anyone. Right. Who's and you say yes. You say yes. It's like um, one of my teachers, so I went to boarding school in Germany, right? And uh, one of my teachers, she, she reached out on, on Facebook. She goes, hey, so the school is doing their, and I don't know if it's a quarterly magazine, a yearly magazine, whatever magazine, right? And mm -hmm. um, we would love stories from former students, from the alumni, their success stories. Are you willing to write your story? Heck yeah, absolutely, yes. Nice. And then I was like, oh, wait a minute, I have to do that in German. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, and it's been a long time. I mean, I can speak German, but speaking and writing is, is, is in German is really different, right? Right. Yeah. More, more different than it is in English, I think. So I was like, oh, no, what do I do? I have not written anything in German in, I can literally say decades. Wow. Right. So I was like, oh, no, what do I do? So this is use the tools, guys. I'm telling you, use the tools. So I wrote it in English and then Google Translate. Whoop. There you go. And I laughed because what I mean, it had the gist of it, but not. But what that did for me, it reignited those neurons. Mm. OK. Nice. And then Microsoft Word. Did you know Microsoft Word translates? Yeah, Microsoft Word Translate, and the translation is actually better than Google. Oh. Yeah, so that really helped. So between the two, then I was like, I was like, oh, I get it. I can do this. And then I was actually rewrote the whole everything in German. But again, I was using the tools. I said, yes, I was scared out of my wits because I was like, oh, my God, it's been so long. I don't know how to do this in German, right? <laughs> <laughs> figured it out though but see that's that's the persistence and that's 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 the taking the steps when the opportunity knocks you say yes yeah absolutely. and then you trust that the pieces that you need will fall into place and sometimes it has to be an outside person like for you with your job yeah you know it's like hey did you hear nothing yeah. wrong with that nothing wrong with that and um and here's the other thing too i like talking about that it is never too late Oh, goodness, no. It is never too late. And we actually both have a story in the, in the becoming 50 something. Yes. So I was in volume one, you're in volume two, which is awesome. Yeah. I'm so excited for yeah, that. Yeah. And, and the premise of this is really, there's are stories of women that are 50 and older, starting new, starting something, stepping into their purpose, into their gift, into their you know, their joy and they're happy, mm -hmm. right? Because it's yeah. never too late. Yeah, it's, um, I told Cheryl, I said, if I had known you or knew of the, the first project, I would have, I would probably would have uh, jumped on board. Um, but I was so grateful to be part of book two, um, Becoming 50 something book two. And uh, I'm still reading. I just received my books not long ago. So I, I just, started getting into a few of the a few of the stories and it's it's um it's a very interesting time of life anyway um when you hit 50 and um i'll be entering chapter 52 in a couple of months and party yeah because, <laughs> <laughs> and, and i say um you know, so when I think about, you know, I, and I see here, happiness matters. When I look at that and I'm just like, wow, I'm so grateful that I've had the journey I've had so far in my life. And now it just like kicked up 10 more notches because I'm really comfortable and I'm really good in my own skin. And I'm sure about who I am. I, I know what I want. I can change my mind if I want. <laughs> um, but I feel like it's all good. It's just, um, I'm just at a different place of peace in my life. 
And I think that has just made me relax into who I am even more so. And mm-hmm. uh, so, you know, for those it. of you that are interested in getting the book, I mean, for sure, grab a, grab volume one and volume two of uh, Becoming 50 Something for those of you that um, that are either there in your 50s or you're approaching them. I, I think there's- Yeah, I mean, or you're at a crossroads. It doesn't matter what age you are. Yeah, actually, you're right about that because, yeah, there's all kinds of um, stories that I that resonate with me and it, it was not uh, other people's stories. Um, that still resonate with me because of other people in my life that that story is connected to, you know, so it just always gives perspective, but, um, right. Yeah, yeah. It's never too late for it. That's a, that's a mind thing, you know, about, you know, thinking you have to have certain things. I, I used to think I had to have certain things at a certain point in my life, you know, but. You know, oh, that I'm, control I'm, thing. Way past that now. <laughs> so that's a control thing. Let go of it. Yeah. You know, everything, everything that is meant to be will be, mm-hmm. you know, and if, if you want something, you still have to take action. It's, it's really that simple. So, Hey, Tara, yeah. <laughs> what adds to you happy? What do you do for happy? Well, how do you define happiness one? And then what do you do to add to your happy? The happiness for me is it's peace. It's peace for me. It's knowing that like inner peace or world peace? It's it's inner peace. Okay. It's inner peace for me, um, knowing that for one, my my family, my immediate family, everyone's good. You know, we're good, we're healthy. Um, you know, we we have uh, persevered and continue to persevere through the world change. And we're still thriving, you know, we would thinking we were talking um, a few, um, my son and I, my oldest son, we were talking a few weeks ago about this. And I said, you know, we all went through a lot of transitions. Mom and dad did, you and your brother did. And I said, but look at where we are now. I mean, it, it, it changed some things that we had going on, but now everyone seems to be at this, uh, at this, this place where there's a calm, you know? Mm -hmm. And, and for me, so when I think about my happy, I think about uh, a, my inner peace and my, my inner space, but I also look at my family and where we are as a collective. And for me, when I feel like that's all good, I'm even better. I'm even better. Nice. Um, so that, that's how I would define it. And what was the, what was the other half of your story? What I'm um, What do you do what, for um, fun to, to add more to your happy? To add more to my happy, oh man. Well, Other than being really fabulous and, you know, doing all these fabulous things. <laughs> <laughs> um, what do I do to add to my happy? I, I, I like, um, you know, still part work for me, but it's not anymore. But I really, I really just like to listen to different perspectives. I really do. Like I listen to lots of podcasts. I will, I, I love my inspirational, motivational audio things. I, I'll just have them on while I'm driving. And then there'll just be that one day that this one phrase sticks out that I've, and I've heard this audio like several times. I'm like, wait, Ooh, I got to write that down. But when I do that, what it does is it sparks another creative juice for me. So those are the things that kind of fuel me and keep me, uh, keep me happy. And, and I also make sure I get good rest. That's a key thing for me. I have to have good rest. And when I know I've had good rest, I can tell because when I wake up in the morning, I, I already got some ideas firing off in my head and I'm writing them down. Um, nice. so, so those things are what, uh, what keep me running and, and my, my family, but also my extended family. I, I have, um, a lot of siblings and when we get together my family my my siblings uh we refuel each other for sure that is awesome i love that um do you have any hobbies uh and no work is not a hobby no no <laughs> <laughs> you know i have to say i i'm probably not good at that department when it comes to having any particular hobby you know no i don't Hey, there's nothing wrong with that. Mm-mm. You know, I go through phases. It's like, oh, I want to do this. And then I buy all like the, the the supplies and everything. And I do it for five minutes. And I'm like, yeah, not my thing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm not a <laughs> because it's like, oh, I can do over here. 
Yeah, I, I'm not the uh, crafting person. I'm not like, no, my thing is, you know, I, you know, when the weather gets a little bit nicer here, you know, I like to just be out in nature. I like to take my walks. And I honestly, I just like to sit outside and let my mind wander and sit in the backyard. I have lots of space back there. And um, so I'm really looking forward to when the weather changes, because then I can be outside in my, you know, just in nature. Right. I love I love being in nature. You know, I wish I could really take Mo for walks, mm. you know, or go for hikes and everything and working on it. PT is whooping my hiney, let me tell you. And keep at it. Keep at it. I, I am. And I I see the 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 changes, you know, yeah. and it it's the the small little things I was telling my PT the other day. She goes, So do you feel any benefit? And I'm like, okay, fine, I'll admit it. <laughs> You know, so for me, one of the things is I'm able to carry my coffin because I love coffee. Anybody that knows me, y'all know I love coffee. For me to be able to carry my coffee mug mm -hmm. from the kitchen into my office without spilling mm. is huge. And I was not able to do that before I started physical therapy. Wow. So that's probably It's a little goals in life. <laughs> small wins but you know see you'll 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 chuckle at yourself about that but that is so big and and that's why we can overlook those little small moments and just think it wasn't enough and it's like no just like be so grateful for that for that right uh, for that for that coffee stain in the cup that day <laughs> right you know and and thing. the thing is too it's like we're so focused on looking at the big gigantic wow moments mm -hmm. you no know, it's like oh when that happens i'll be really grateful no yeah. you'll be grateful before you'll be grateful for all the little pebbles you know all the little pennies along the way that led you to that pot of gold yeah and then you're even then you're happy too for that pot of gold but you're happy for every little single penny little drop little pebble little everything in your way yeah, that you got as a gift, and even the the blocks that you get, they're gifts. Yeah, you know, because for me, they they help me to not get complacent. They help me stay vigilant. Oh yeah, you know, they help me. It's like, oh wait a minute, I was ignoring this over here. So the universe is like, hello, pay attention now. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> If you insist, <laughs> you know, oh, yeah. but it's just sometimes you need that, that, that little nudge or, I mean, for me, it's like the hitting with the two by four from the universe, you know, because did I mention I'm a little slow on the uptake sometimes? <laughs> <laughs> you shared that, you shared that for sure. <laughs> and that's okay. It is. You know, and sometimes I, I laugh at people. It's like, you know what? My dots are simply not connected. And I look at people and I tell them, they're telling me something. They're all excited. And I just give them that, that, that blank look because my dots really are not connecting. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing. I'm not beating myself up over it. I'm not going like, oh my gosh, how stupid must I be? And you know, mm -hmm. how dumb is this? Why do I not understand this? Don't do that. Don't no. do that. Laugh at it. And, and look at the person. It's like, you know what? I know you explain it to me really well, but my dots are not connecting. Yeah, and and, and when you say that, I, I was ch chuckling at um, the fact that I often laugh at myself a lot. And um, <laughs> that, <laughs> that's what brings me joy as well, because I never take myself <laughs> too seriously because I'll do something or something will happen around me and and I can't stop laughing. So I mean, I love humor and I love a good time. And <laughs> so awesome. you know, don't be so uh not you, I'm saying, but in general. No, in general, yeah. Like don't be so don't beat yourself up about things. Like life is already serious enough. So mm -hmm. um find your joy, find some comedy, find some things that will, you know, just bring bring some levity to the situation. Too. I love that. And it raises your happy vibration. Raise your vibration. Hashtag raise your vibration. Yeah, like the story I shared in, in the upcoming uh, book there, like, yeah, that was quite a day. I won't say anything about it, but I. I right. I, yeah. I, when, when I read that, I was like, this is awesome. <laughs> I had to write that story right away because that was fresh. That was hot off the press that day. I was oh, like, wow. What a day that was. It yeah. Was but I mean, me. stuff happens, you know, oh, and yeah. it's like stuff happens to all of us and it's not what happens to us it's how we react to it 
Oh, for sure. Yeah. You know, and I always tell people, it's like, you know, tragedy happens to all of us. Mm -hmm. Give yourself a time frame to be mad, to be angry, to be sad, whatever, but don't let it linger. Don't stay there. Yeah. Just don't stay there. Move on. Find the joy. You know, especially it's like, um, like with COVID, so many people lost a loved one. Yeah. You know, it is devastating. I totally get that. But why not focus on the good times that you had together? Mm -hmm. You know, all, the, all the, the lessons you learned, all the gifts, all the blessings, all the times you had together. Focus on that. And the people you still have in your life. Well, so yeah, you that definitely. That. <laughs> and definitely. What, yeah. And what you can do to, you know, make those relationships stronger. Mm -hmm. You know, um, there were there were a lot of lessons we got. We all got taught individually, you know, right with our time being home and um, a lot of growth, a lot of growth. So, oh, yeah. And, <laughs> and you know, it's like looking back the 2020 hindsight, everything that happens happens for a reason. And it generally happens for our highest good. Mm. We may not agree with it in the moment. Not in the moment we usually do. <laughs> <laughs> Most of the time, we do not agree with that in that moment. But looking back, it's like, you know, everything that, that for me that I've been through and going through, it's like, oh, okay. Because of this, this is going on, which is a blessing, which is great. So anyway, Tara, you are amazing. I love you. Thank you so much. You Thank you for being on the show. You, you are beyond amazing. I mean, I'll tell you, you are one person who I'll look up and, oh, she's on another track. She's over here now. Like, this woman is, like, on the move. Well, you know, you got to do what you got to do. You follow your heart. You never, <laughs> you never go wrong when you follow your heart. Absolutely. Hey, Tara, if people want to get a hold of you, what's the best way to get a hold of you? Uh, best way to connect with me is uh, two spots on LinkedIn under Tara Hall. And you can also connect if you're on Facebook on Tara Hall Inspired Solutions, which is my business page. Nice. And I caught myself just real. I just realized I still kept calling you Tara. That's quite all right. I've been listening to that since I was a young child. It's okay. Thank you. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> Eventually, you know, those dots connecting thing. Yeah. Anyway. Hey guys, we'll be right back with a tip for the week. Thank you. Welcome back. Thanks for hanging around. And we'll get right to the tip of the week. And this week is from Ellen Cohen. And it says, do not wait until the conditions are perfect to begin. Beginning makes the conditions perfect. And that goes right along the lines what um, Tara and I were talking about, that opportunity to love speed. And sometimes you just say yes, just say yes, jump in and do it. And you figure it out along the way. Because if it's meant to be, it will be. And you will get everything that you need along the way. And don't be afraid to course correct. You know, if something is not working for you, there's no point in just keeping going and pushing through and hitting one another roadblock and another roadblock and another roadblock. It's just not conducive. Don't do that. Okay. If you realize it's like, hey, this is not working, change direction. As I, if you talk to some of the people that know me, you know, there was a joke when I went networking and I haven't been in, in say a few months or something and I see people and they <laughs> look at me like, so what are you into these days? You know, because I didn't know what I wanted. And so I tried so many different things and when they didn't work, it's like, you know, I mean, there's no point in continuing. I'm not happy. It doesn't do anything for me. Moving on. There's nothing wrong with that. As long as you know in your heart who you are and what you want, go for it, go for it. You know, it's, it's amazing. The things that happen. It's like, I never thought I would have a TV show. I was dreaming about it, you know, and I was just 
doing my thing and it's like adding doing the things that add to my happiness and what fill my cup and one thing led to another and look opportunity came said hey do you want to do a tv show yes and here we are on mupotv.com so thank you don't be afraid to say yes to opportunity and don't be afraid to say no if it does if it's not for you no is a sentence it's all good hey to catch next week's episode, tune into mupotv.com. To catch last week's and other episodes, same thing, mupotv.com, as well as other great shows. They're all on mupotv.com. That's www.mupotv.com. And if you feel like you want to spread more happiness and share the happy colors and the happiness matters, go to our store, the happysupplyshop.com. It's happysupplyshop.com. And um, yeah. We'll see you next week. Remember, be happy, be kind, be love. You're amazing. Talk to you later. Bye. Oh. Hey.